I had to put my cat down yesterday. My cat I've had since 2003 when I came to Canada. I came to Canada, I had already been disowned. So my cat was my family. I wanted to say thank you to everyone who has just the pouring messages of support and love and condolences that I got on Twitter and, and everything, all kinds of social media. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry I wasn't able to respond to every single one. Yesterday was a very frightening and painful day for a lot of people, not just me. I uh, logged in a little bit online and I saw that there was essentially a, a virtual war <laughs> going on because of what happened in New Zealand, the shooting. And I've also been asked to give my two cents worth about the shooting, which I, uh, all I can say is I, I'm not going to call anything. I'm not going to engage in what people are doing because they are essentially furthering the agenda of the shooter. And the agenda of the shooter aligns with the agenda of ISIS and Islamists, as well as jihadis, by the way. So the identity politics war that you all are engaging in, especially <laughs> our politicians, whoa! I didn't know Canada had so many ideologues. Did you? I, frightening, frightening what I saw yesterday coming out of politicians. People we have elected, we have elected to take charge and, and lead us through difficult times. They're on their full blown identity politics full-blown division and hatred and fueling the fire that is currently running rampant in all of North America and Europe. I don't know how this is going to end. I don't see good. I don't see any good coming out of this, by the way. This didn't even happen in Canada. And yet, it has pitted in Canada. We are flying a, ma a flag at half mask in Canada. Yet, when tragedies happen in Canada, that flag isn't always flown at half mask because of identity politics. In Canada, whites hate blacks, whites hate each other, blacks hate whites. There's complete lack of harmony between any ethnic groups. Uh, Muslims feel that they are being victimized. Christians feel that, they're, feel that they are under attack. Jews, Jewish people are experiencing magnificent levels of anti-Semitism. And we have become tribes. Now it's a tribal tribal war now. I I'm waiting for it to move from online to like real life, which I think it has it has happened as you can tell from the shooting that happened in um, in New Zealand. What I wanted to say today is my story. What happened to me? <laughs> And I'm no shooter, and I'm not comparing myself to the shooter in New Zealand. But there's something critical that I wanted to point out here. Other than the fact that you guys are all listening to the Islamists, and what he did is essentially the, the, um, the behavior of the left, and you're all feeding off the hand of identity politics at this point. He was an identity politics furthering crazy person. And he gave you this voluptuous piece of meat <laughs> to feed off. And what do you guys do? You oblige. You go into war with each other over this piece of meat. When I was in Saudi Arabia, when I was abducted by the religious authorities and imprisoned, I was interrogated for somewhere between four to six hours, heavily, heavily interrogated. And one thing was made very clear to me in the interrogation room. And it was that it doesn't matter what the truth is. It wasn't going to see the light of day. 
they made that very clear to me, the religious authorities. I kept telling them the truth. And they kept saying, no, that's not what happened. We have witnesses. We know what happened. And then they began to threaten me. Then to the point that they presented me with about four white empty pages and they asked me to sign and put my thumbprint and I did because I was tired of the accusations and I was really truly tired and I wanted it all to end. And they filled those papers with lies because to them, I was a tool. I was something that they could use to further their narrative and an agenda. And the agenda that they furthered was that women are evil and that we are whores and that we deserve to be hidden from society completely and punished. <coughs> and that's what they wrote in those papers. They wrote a lie which everyone believed, including the society, the courts, and my own family. They believed the lies of the religious authorities over me as I swore to them over and over what the truth was. The reason I'm saying this is because the shooter gave you his truth in a manifesto. This manifesto now is being used by every ideologue out there, every confused person out there, and every identity politics crazed human beings out there. He told you why he did this. And yet you guys choose to ignore it and to engage to, in, in war tactics with each other, in hate, in, in further dividing civilization, further dividing us from each other. To further your own what? Your own narratives? To further some sort of ideology? Who's right here? Who's wrong? Tell me. I would like to know. What is right? Hate? is right? Islam is right? White is right? What's right? When do we stop these twisted conversations? And, and when do we, they're not even conversations, we're yelling at each other now. We just hate each other to oblivion for what? We don't even know. I, I don't know at this point how we can find our way back to each other. Um, all I can say is I'm not playing this game anymore. I am not going to pit one person against another person. The only thing I will repeat that I will work on from now on is a united Canada. That's my two cents worth about the shooting that happened uh, yesterday. I don't care who's wrong and who's right at this point. I don't care who you want to blame for what. I don't care what color skin he was or the victims were don't care what ideology anybody was. I want the division to stop. And I want you to understand that the more we fuel this, the more the Islamists win. Thanks, guys.